Howdy folks, Cowboy Joe here with a recapitulation of section 9.20 on 1D conservation of a man. Your goal at the end of this video lecture is to be able to relate Newton's third law uh, to the conservation of momentum in the derivation process and recognize the conditions under which the momentum is conserved. And of course, solve these 1D conservation of momentum problems. So let's look at a collision. Before the collision, let's imagine uh, this um, A object is moving towards this B object. They both have a certain momentum. Remember, this is the symbol for momentum. Momentum is a P, and it is equal to mass times velocity. So they have their own initial or original O, momentum. Then they collide. And when they collide, A applies a force on B and B applies a force on A. And then they move away with their new momentum. So if you focus on a collision, we can apply Newton's third law. Newton's third law says those forces are equal in size and opposite direction. So we got the force of B on A is equal to the negative force of A on B. Now they were making contact for the same amount of time, so we can multiply both sides by delta T. So now we have this equation. What's that look like? That looks like the impulse momentum. That looks like impulse right there on both sides. Remember, impulse is equal to the change of momentum. So if we change both sides into the change of momentum, then we have the momentum of A at the end. That's what the F means, final, minus the momentum of A at the beginning is going to equal the opposite of this difference over here of object B. Don't get too thrown. I'm going to simplify this equation for you, tell you exactly how to work it in a minute. But if we just distribute the negative, move some things around, change the uh, P's to MA's, we have a nice little equation that we call the law of conservation of momentum. And it states that momentum of any closed isolated system does not change. And it basically says that this momentum that the objects have before the collision, it's going to equal the momentum of the objects after the collision. So the, the big words here um, states that momentum of any closed and isolated. We got to figure out if you wanted to pause the video for a second, write down what you think closed and isolated are. You'll check that in a minute. But what do the scientific terms closed and isolated mean when referring to a system? Well, here's what it means. You got two objects coming at each other. If they do not gain or lose any mass, if they do not break any pieces off, if the football stays intact, the basketball stays intact, we have a closed system. Now, typically in a collision with a car, something breaks off. Maybe a little piece of metal or glass breaks. That would not be closed. So if both objects remain intact, then we have a closed system. Now, what's the other word? Isolated. So now isolated means nothing else is touching either object. So if we drew a dashed line around this collision, nothing else would be touching. If it's touching the ground, it would not be an isolated system. If you're touching a hand, if there's a hand that goes through that dashed line, touching one of the balls, it is not an isolated system. All right, so let's recap. Momentum before a collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. All right, so let's look at this example. If we were to draw these uh, items that are colliding in duplication, it would look like this. And step one, really, for these types of problems is identify the mass and velocity of each item. First of all, the first two would be before the collision. So this bullet is moving at 35 or 475, strikes a bag of flour that's not moving. And now after the collision, the bullet leaves at 275 and the bag is moving at question mark. So this creates your equation. So again, identify the mass and velocity of each item before, that would be on the left, of the equals. And then after, that would be on the right. 
and then add those sums together. So that creates your equation. Make sure you are converting that to uh, kilograms. So we have four terms, one, two, three, four. Simplify each term first and then solve for the unknown. Minus this 9.63 and then divide by the 2.5 to get your answer. It's going to be 2.8 meters per second if it was a closed and isolated collision, which it isn't. Let's look at another one. This bullet strikes a steel ball that is at rest. The bullet bounces backwards. Hmm, this may be closed. Um, if the bull, uh, the uh, steel ball, wait, was it say at rest? It did say at rest. All right, so let's start. We got a, a, a bullet with 35 and 475. It's a 2.5 at rest. The bullet bounces backwards after its collision. So how do we account for that? If we are assuming to the right is positive, backwards has to be negative. So the bullet bounces backwards at negative 5. And um, how fast is the steel ball going? Well, here's your equation. It's 35 times 475 plus 2.5 times 0 equals this product plus this product. So working through the math again, step one would be simplify each term. Now we are adding this. Watch this negative makes this term negative. Add it to both sides makes this a little bit bigger. Divided by the 2.5, we get 6.7. So this isn't too bad. Let's look at another one. This is a rear end collision. This little car right here is cruising along and a faster car hits it. So this one was moving at 17. The slower one's moving at 17, faster one's moving at 23. We got a bigger and a smaller as well. So after the collision, they're stuck together, moving at some unknown V. So we can solve this, put your equals in the middle by this product plus this product equals 1875 times V plus 1025 times V, which makes them like terms. And we can combine them into one. So we can look at that as 1875 V plus 1025 V or 2900 V. Now again, this product here reduces, this product here reduces, add them together and then divide. This does have two sig figs, 43 and 17 makes that 60. Divided by that number gives you 21. So it's the same process here. So let's look at this one. We do have some prob uh, example problems that uh, work where there's an explosion or something blowing up. So this one says a four kilogram model rocket is launched. So at the beginning, everything's together and um, they're not moving. So that makes this problem a little bit easier. You got a four kilogram model rocket that splits into the model rocket and the expelled gas, expelled burnt fuel, exhaust, whatever. All right, so now let's identify it. Originally, this thing was four kilograms and it split into these two items. Well, it said this was 50, come on, there it is. This was 50 grams which is 0 0.05 kilograms. So if this four split into, or gave this much exhaust out, 0 0.05, then how much is left out of the four? It splits, so we gotta make sure that the sum of these two masses equals the total for this one. So watch out for that. Now this exhaust is moving at 625, and the model rocket has a question mark. What's its speed gonna be? So originally nothing's moving, and then it splits. So you got to watch out for um, explosions like this type of problem. But it still worked the same. Four to, you got a big fat zero on the left of your equation. This product plus this product. And that makes it a little bit easier, actually. Um, so we can get our V at negative 7.9. So if down, does it say down? What is the velocity of the rocket after fuel? Ignore that stuff. So down is going to be positive. We left this one be positive. So this guy's going to be going um, negative up. Um, yeah, watch out for that. Sometimes they say down is negative. So your answer will be positive. So tag it with a negative. Hey, Superman. Thanks for stopping by. Sure. Anything for you. I have a couple questions I'd like to ask you about saving Lois Lane from a fall. Sure. A tall building. Remember? 
When she was in the helicopter? Yeah, that's the one. We did some calculations. Uh, when you stopped her downward motion in about 1.07 seconds, since she, uh, she fell for almost nine seconds, you changed her speed from like 87 meters per second to a dead stop in about one second. Yeah, I'm pretty strong. That resulted in a force on her body of almost 5,000 newtons, which is over a thousand pounds of force. I work out every day. Do you realize that, that, that this amount of force on somebody's head will accelerate it at a rate of almost 50 Gs? That's 50 times the force of gravity. Do you think I hurt Lois? If you were to stand at sea level, that would be one G. The record G-force on a roller coaster is about 6.3. Fighter pilots sometimes experience 8 or 9 Gs. I'm sure that 50 Gs would have definitely done some damage to a brain. Well, that explains a lot about her. Lately, she's been acting very childlike. I bet. Do you have any recommendations on how to save people when they're falling? Yeah, it's simple. Increase the stopping time as much as possible for falling objects, and that'll reduce the force on that object. That sounds easy. Thanks, cowboy. Well, I gotta go. Thanks for stopping in. So this is the scene of Superman saving Lois Lane. He just picked up her hat and noticed she's at the top of the tall building in a helicopter, and he has to change into a Superman outfit. Sees that uh, phone booth, he says, too small. He moves along, he finds another location to change into his uniform while Lois Lane hangs from a thread. Well, this is what uh, we're gonna analyze, uh, her fall and Superman saving her. So at this point, Superman takes off and <laughs> which didn't look real, but whenever she lets go using video, I could time until Superman made contact with her, which is right here. So that took nine seconds. Fifty six point seven kilogram lowest lane was in free fall for 8.84 seconds from this tall building. When 102 massive Superman flew straight up and caught her, stopping her fall in 1.07 seconds. How fast was Superman going in order for both bodies to stop? Now, this is a conservation momentum problem. So we have masses and velocities of each. Let's look at Lois Lane falling. Here she is. She starts at zero. Her mass is 56.7, and uh, she falls for 8.84 seconds. So, you know, if we throw that 8.84 seconds into the uh, fall box, the down box, we've got 00 G, and we can calculate her speed when Superman uh, first made contact with her with the first equation by just multiplying these two things together. So at some point, she's 86.6. Now, Superman's 102 kilograms. He's flying with a certain velocity. Now, he doesn't have to be flying at this speed or more in order to stop her because he's got a lot more mass. So, at some point, they're not moving in the middle. So, let's look at our conservation momentum problem. So, no moving. And originally, we have, well, mass times velocity. That would be 56.7 times, let's go down to negative, 86.6. Now, Superman's 102 times V. So I would expect because of his heavier mass, he doesn't have to be going as fast as she's going. So when we do our calculation, we end up with Superman must have slowed down to 49 meters per second, which isn't too bad. But he stopped her in one second, 1.07 seconds in the movie. So if her body stopped in 1.07 seconds, we could use our impulse momentum theorem to figure out the force on her body, really the force on her head. She doesn't even grab the head, he holds her like a baby. So her head goes from 
86.6 meters per second to zero in one second. And that is the tragedy that would kill somebody. But these calculations give us a value of 4,590 newtons. 4, 000, that's about a thousand pounds. So that is an excessive amount of force being applied to the head. And that's <clears throat> pretty close 50 G's, 50 G's of force. Now, a roller coaster, like we said in the interview, about six, you know, sometimes you experience something more if you're in like uh, fast airplanes, you experience some G-forces there, but generally not over 10. And this is 50. So, oh yeah, poor Lois probably died. You know what Lois said? She said, if you have me, who has you? <laughs> she, she's still functional, but anyhow. That's it, folks. We derived the conservation momentum from Newton's third law and the impulse momentum theorem. And we talked about those two conditions that need to be met in order for this law of conservation to be true. It has to be closed and it has to be isolated. And then we solve problems dealing with it. Cowboy Joe out. <laughs>